Well, hey there guys and welcome to Star Wars Half Hour. Although, I don't know, we're going to go as long as it takes to get through this spoiler review of Solo, a Star Wars story. Spoilers! <laughs> spoiler, lee, 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 spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. We are going to walk you guys through almost scene by scene of what we thought of the Solo film. So if you have not seen it yet, spoilers! Spoilers! Please, you know, like, only watch this... If you haven't seen the movie, only watch this review if you're just not going to see it. Yeah. But, or, you know, otherwise watch it and then watch this review. Yes, because they're going to get spoiled. Yeah, so we're going to go through the whole thing, and then at the end we'll give our individual scores. Uh, and who knows, we our opinions may change as we go, because we'll be like, oh yeah, that yeah, thing. Yeah, that's that's anyway, that's so let's just get right into it. So this let's movie... Uh, the f first off, I do want to say that you know, you, if you guys have seen any other reviews, the critics aren't wrong about one thing, which is that the movie does start off a little topsy turvy, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. The first fifteen to twenty minutes really have quite the bit of a pacing problem and are missing one very important thing, which I'll get into in just a minute. So the movie starts out on Corellia, yes. which is it's Corellia. We've always wanted to see Corellia, but it's a little underwhelming, I think. You know? Yeah, it didn't really. Feel like Corellia. It kind of just felt like a f insert random sci-fi spaceport here. Yeah, and I was like, "Cool, Han's on a planet I have no connection with." They didn't Which, build it up to like feel anything. Or, there's, there's uh, definitely. Uh, I have some. I'm gonna <laughs> let Rich keep going because I have some very negative opinions about the first 20 you know, minutes of this movie. We obviously know that the Corellia has spaceports. Every planet does, uh, but you know, it's just it felt a little too. Honestly, it felt like a weak version of, like, the undergrounds of, like, Coruscant, you know, to yeah. me. And I didn't really get a sense of Corelli. And again, we've never seen Corelli before, but the way that Corelli has been described in novels and comics in the past, uh, I was expecting a bit more. Uh, and, you know, I, it would have just been nice to kind of show, like, the whole first – I don't think – was there even a shot of the whole planet? I don't know if they ever showed a shot of the whole planet. No, they had they had a far out shot as they like flew in for okay. the intro and that was about it. I don't even remember that. Yeah. And then I and then it's like just like I guess all of these a Star Wars stories they're just so against the opening crawl but not against the long time ago in a galaxy far far away. But this movie really needed an opening crawl. Instead they just had the flashing text. It was like text yeah Text. yeah it was it, remember it, that oh my god yeah it was <laughs> so it, it, i have so many problems with the intro to this you're just movie. like sitting there reading it's like okay there's a paragraph and then it fades away another paragraph See, i don't understand how the people just make who, it a crawl i don't understand how the people who didn't like the last jedi aren't absolutely up in arms about this movie because the reasons they don't like the last jedi they did it again in the solo film they included 20 minutes of plot creation that had nothing to do with the whole story and weren't needed they just burned narrative time that could have been used in more suspenseful moments the first 20 minutes of this movie could have been summed up with a line when um kira met han saying it's been a long time i haven't seen you since Corellia," and that would have given me the same amount of emotional yeah, connection they, they that i got have, um they could have um <laughs> yeah they could have left it kind of a mystery as to their backstory because hey guess what it's okay to have some mystery in a movie right? it makes it a little bit more what? exciting yeah. Instead, they it's like here's them together as friends and, and doing and, this crazy cool like chase scene. And Hans and, this rogue badass, but he's not too badass because he's got his speeder stuck in the wall. Uh, like, uh, <laughs> and I don't know though. I I I liked the idea of like that 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 worm boss lady. Thing. That was we were talking about this the other day. The character creation in Solo, the 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 weird aliens, their dress. The scenes, beautiful, beautiful. Probably the best next to Rogue One so far. Just, yeah. just the different types of people that they put in this film was incredible. But, oh, man, did that narrative drag on. Yeah, just like the whole like, thing and he faked the bomb and everything. It's like, yeah. I think they were, they were just trying to have that all be in good fun, but I don't think it really translated to film great, in my opinion. That whole thing just seemed a little like chaotic. It, um, you know what it was? It was a clear sign that they had two sets of directors. Yeah. It, it, that, that the one scene that sticks out for me um, in this whole Corellia moment was uh, showing what the direction the film was going to go and how worse it was, uh, how it was going to be just terrible was when uh, they're speeding away. And I forget the, the bad guy's name. I don't know if they ever got a name off of him who's chasing oh, no, Han and Kira in the speeders. 
Um, they name his speeder, but I can't remember that off the, the top of my head either. But as they're speeding away, they're going to a security checkpoint, and there's a little droid there, and he's like, stop, you need to show your security protocol. And then he gets you know, hit by the second one, and his head falls and hits the ground and goes, protocol. It's, you know, it's and funny, even like, as we're, like, uh, talking about it, it's like the plot still doesn't make sense there. No. You know, I'm sure people are listening. There's like, wait, you guys are explaining it, but what actually is happening during this no, moment? Nothing. Nothing. All we're getting is a little bit of a background that Han has a reason to go back to Corellia, and and that was his motivation for joining up. Yeah, I mean, and, he's stealing all of this. He was stealing joining. something to give to this boss lady, and then he failed to give it to her. That's the basic idea. But yeah, again, like like D Rock said here, this whole opening scene was just to give Kira a backstory with Han to make the rest of the movie it, make sense, it was even though they didn't need it. It was basically setting up why Han joined the empire right which was really weak too yeah because, they like, gave us nothing they didn't give us any basic training they didn't give us anything they could have spent more time in that and watching oh, Han. yeah i'm gonna get to that okay in just okay, a minute, okay. Let's, i have a lot of rants on that really let's back. go back okay so they're at the uh so they're trying to run away from the the worm boss lady's yeah. minions and they're stuck for some reason they make their way to the oh, imperial it, uh, proxima Proxima, okay. Yes. They somehow make their way to the Imperial Recruitment Center. It was very convenient. Yeah. And uh, then they're like, oh, we gotta hide, we gotta hide. But I don't know what their plan is because, I mean, they're gonna get scanned and checked in eventually anyway. Yeah. And they're like, I guess they're just worried mostly about getting away from the, the Proxima's so, guys. So let me say this real quick, and maybe this will change what you're about to say. My understanding of the Corellia scene when they're trying to get through that first checkpoint is that everything outside of that first checkpoint is not Imperial controlled is mostly lawless and so that checkpoint is their first and most vital step to them getting off the planet they'll figure out the tickets later they can pay for the tickets later they can boost something they just needed to get through that without anybody noticing because then they're in like the terminal it's like um tom hanks movie where he hangs out at the literally i think it's called the right. terminal it, it, that was, <laughs> it is that, called the terminal. it's called the terminal so that was that moment that's what that was the point of that so if, if there had never been another Star Wars movie before, I would agree with you. But Kara, we know Corellia is an Imperial controlled planet. But like, they really did. Why would they? I don't know why they would section it, off. It was Imperial controlled, but it, they. I think they were making it uh, very clear that it was controlled, but they did not have a grasp on the ground. Like maybe they controlled the airspace. Maybe they controlled a lot of the. But they didn't the care stuff. about everything. No, they didn't care about everything at all because there was what one trooper who took after them speeding only because. They were getting close to the checkpoint yeah when they were first racing you could tell that the farther away you got from the the ports and things like that on Corelli, at least that's me trying yeah. to dive into the mind of the people who wrote it i think that was their idea is that what they were trying to get across it was still dumb yes yes it was yeah no, it didn't change anything. because okay. it just it just in that moment you're not it's like okay how is this going to work out for them and then just yeah. like the one little gate shuts and he's like oh my god yeah i'm never gonna yeah. see you again yeah. Yeah. she's like ah! and, <laughs> and it's like yeah. can't he just go back like what's stopping him from just like oh, excuse me i need to go back like at the, at that point are you trapped in the security thing he like, could have just turned himself in they could have went to jail and then figured it out later i don't know it was just it's it not like little... the impeelers were gonna execute them for getting through the the gate they've never been known for doing that it, it was, was just a little uh, unbelievable that there was no way in that moment that he couldn't figure out a way to get back to her then instead yeah. he has to just leave i was also planet. super upset on the absolute b i thought we had moved so far in the bumbling buffoonery that's usually considered to be the stormtroopers into a place in like rebels and stuff like that that shows them actually being efficient and and well groomed machines to being like the star wars equivalent of the tsa on the corellia that was brutal there's yeah there's there's and you know i think you were mentioning this a little bit earlier there's definitely a sense in this movie where uh, in Rogue One, uh, you know, they did reshoots, but because uh, Gareth Edwards was there the entire time, uh, you know, I mean, I know that they had another guy kind of help with directing the reshoots, but Gareth Edwards was still there. So there was some consistency with the tone. Yeah. Here, you can really feel like it's like, okay, if within one scene, it's like, oh, here's some shots by the first two guys. Here's some shots by Ron Howard. Yeah. And it's like tone, 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 tone. And it's like things aren't quite meshing well. Mm -hmm. So every scene kind of feels like a mesh mash throughout the entire film. But this is the worst offense right yes. here at the beginning. Uh, so anyways, yeah. 
So he goes and he's you know at the recruitment office yeah. and he's like, well, okay, I guess I have to be a stormtrooper now because I have no or choice for some reason. This is why. And so he's like, the name's Han. Be a pilot. And apparently he didn't have a last name That's for some reason. Felt and that was so like the worst. But that was like another Rogue One moment where it's yeah. like Rogue Rogue One, but they did it again. It was like, what's your name? Han. Last name? I don't have a last name. Sad. Are you with anyone? No, I'm by myself. Okay, oh. Han Solo. Im- Imperial typo. And going. That- <laughs> Solo. <laughs> hey, hey, Frank! I just named this guy Solo. <laughs> it's bad. That was bad, in my opinion. That was yeah, real that bad. Was it was like so they're I just gonna call him Solo because he's by himself. Yeah, he should have. Yeah, it, it just, we're gonna move right past that because otherwise, me and him are just gonna make fun of that for the rest of the <laughs> thirty-five hours. So, anyways, about this. So he makes it in, right? So he gets in to the recruiting office. And apparently, to be an Imperial soldier, you don't need to pass a background. Because they were just like, what's your name? Oh, we don't care. What's your... You look like 5'2". Yeah, uh, how much do you weigh? 400 pounds? All right, you're a soldier now. Yeah. <laughs> Join then, us. No wonder they failed. They could have the made rebels. like an awesome movie that really focused on his like three-year career with the Empire. No, nope. yeah. immediately following that scene, it's three years later, yep. and it's the scene of him leaving the Imperial Army. Yeah, and he's Army. getting his ass kicked as a foot soldier after three years of basic training, and he's just, he's still that bumbling buffoon. I don't, I did not... Believe yeah, that just at all. Like, so for reference, we're no longer on Corellia. So moving the plot forward for you guys as we spoil all of this. Uh he does his three years in the academy. It just shoots us to the planet of Mimbom, where he uh he encounters uh the criminal game Tobias and his group imposing Imperial soldiers and Beckett. Or, yeah. Beckett, I'm sorry, yeah. Which, it's Tobias Beckett. Beckett. But they only really call him Beckett, Beckett. in the movie, though. Yeah. But yeah, and Beckett is, uh, imp- 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 he's an imposter. He's pretending to be an Imperial captain. Yes. Uh, but um, which, which apparently, the ranking officers don't know each other. Yeah, that was that was also BS a little yeah. bit. Yeah, I was like, really? Because he has a hat on. They're just gonna be like, hey, Captain, hey, Captain. I it really I don't know why they decided to make what was largely considered like the empire was a terrifying force in all of the other movies and became even worse in rogue one we were like in rogue one we we felt it we were like these are the strongest most badass group of people on the planet and they barely made it out of there only because they got lucky and And then that's why rogue one is still fantastic no kidding and then they brought all this in and like the officers know him just because he has a hat on and all of this, like, Lottie da stuff, like, nobody noticed <clears throat> that the guy had four arms and never took off his helmet. Like, oh, how'd, yeah, they, how'd they even yeah. get there? How'd they even get there? Who knows? Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, they skip all that stuff, and it's so important because, you know, you, you imagine, like, how does Han, like, you know, in, like, Empire Strikes Back, he's yeah. like, oh, they're going to release their trash and we'll be able to sneak away. It's like, those are things, like, he learned in the Imperial Academy. Yeah. And now we like those are the things I want to see. I want to see Han training and learning to be a better soldier and a better gun gun wielder and yep. shooter and all yep. that good stuff. Nope, skipped. How, how did he hone his uh, blaster ability when he very clearly on Corellia had no experience with blasters? He knew how to fly because he knew how to drive speeders, and then he got honed in the academy and then uh, basically being a pilot for a couple or well, he got kicked out in their story. Got kicked out of the academy, got the basics down. He knows he's going to be a good pilot. He has the confidence. But they just show him not using a blaster, right? Until he's in this war scene where he killed, I think, no one. I I, I didn't see him shoot a single person in that. I just saw him running around all frazzled. Yeah. And then he escapes. Yeah. Which was kind of cool. This is the part where it picks up for me. Which is where... So, for reference, we're going to back it up a little bit. So, he's on... um, Mimbon, he's fighting. He meets up with Beckett. Beckett basically betrays him immediately and sends him off. And he's like, "This guy's a traitor. He's a deserter. Blah blah blah. Take him away." Then apparently, it's because he says so. The lieutenant or whoever was under the captain goes, "Yeah, take him away." And they throw him into this pit, which seems to be just a. It looks like it's just a prison cell where they don't feed anybody. Yeah. And they ended up catching a Wookiee doing something, which they don't talk about almost. Yeah, they don't say how. It's Chewbacca. Yeah, Chewbacca. He's in the cage with him. They don't say how he got there. He just gets there. And so then it ends up being Chewbacca. I did like this. I did like this scene. I liked it a lot because it showed how Han connected with Chewbacca. 
more so than the first 20 minutes showed how Han connected with Kira. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you immediately saw that Han and Chewbacca had this like immediate understanding of the only way we're going to survive if we're together oh and apparently han can speak Speak wookie Wookie. you know we we know that he can understand it and he speaks it he i speak it a little you know but then that was cute only in that moment and then for the rest of the movie they do the old he just you know repeats what chewie says you said it chewie um (laughs) and there was that like chewbacca i'm gonna have to come up with a a shorter shorter name name and then guess what he doesn't even do it beckett does which we'll get to in a minute. Yeah. Beckett comes up with a shorter name. Yeah, but they don't even, it's not like, they don't, they just start saying Chewy. And Nobody this, says like, a Chewy, you know. Yeah, like, Beckett calls him, I think, because the first time I remember hearing Chewy is when Beckett is playing, which is way later, and we'll get to that in a second, is playing the space chess. Space chess. Yeah. With Chewbacca. Which, there's a name for it, I forgot. Yeah. So anyways, so we do all that, right? He gets out with Chewbacca. Oh, yeah. Worst part of the movie's over, as yeah. far as I'm yeah, concerned. Yeah, it is. That's, that's worst it is. First 25 minutes. Then it gets better. Then it shows how they have this like issue trying to get get along together when Han's like, we gotta go this way, and Chewbacca runs the other way and gets dragged. That was comical. Um, then they end up running into Beckett. Or they catch him right as they're flying away. Well, miracle here. And um, <laughs> Beckett has a change of heart and lands and oh, isn't that cute? Mm. So they get on it. And then they fly off. After that point, um, that's when it cuts to the snow and the train scene, right? Yeah. yeah. That's the, where the movie finally starts picking up. Yes. Know? Yes. And the train scene wasn't long enough. I felt that was, it was a very little, they had a little bit of banter between um, Beckett, I forget the other two people. Um, Val was, was the girl, I think. Val and... Like, you know, this is going to be the payout. This is the one you're going to get, and you'll get to go off. And they talk about, oh, I'm doing it for a girl. Cute. And then Beckett and Scott Val, and they're they're in love. And it's just, I felt. There's this a is, lot of forced relationships And in this, this movie. is the moment that kind of bugged me, was I felt Woody Harrelson was no longer playing his character. I My guess is he had to do so many reshoots in scenes with Alden that he was just like, anybody who has an Emmy, raise their hand. No, nobody I'm gonna, go, who... I, I'm gonna go take 15 <laughs> yeah. he seems sick if you have it. an emmy raise your hand if you need an acting coach raise your hand huh <laughs> yeah and it was I, I felt bad because alden got set up for failure on this one he he kind of figures it out and you could tell where he has those moments of confidence because it really kind of shines through and han but most of the movie it kind of felt very bland kind of sad for woody harrelson who just gave like a, an amazing performance in that three billboards over whatever oh, movie. yeah yeah, yeah that was incredible i just um, got to watch some of the highlights online from that and woody harrelson is an amazing actor yes. but in this movie you can feel him just not giving a he shit. didn't give it it was woody harrelson <laughs> in the star wars film not woody harrelson playing someone in the star wars film yeah it was cranky woody harrelson just like i don't want to do this yeah but okay, so back onto the the train scene. What what did you like about? I don't that? want to talk about the train scene too much because the it's good. It's probably one of the best action pieces in the movie. You're right. It should have been about five minutes longer. Yes, it's all about them doing that old Final Fantasy VIII thing of decoupling cars so that you can get the the stuff that's in the middle. You yeah. know all that jazz. You guys know what I'm talking about. Well, you know you do you don't because you like seven too much to play eight. Screw you. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> No, anyways, uh, well, no, it was I gotta a great bring, scene. I got to bring up something here, though, because they – I cannot find his name. Can you find his name here? Who? Um, Forearms Monkey Guy? Here to help steal. Yeah, Forearm Monkey Guy. I don't think they say it here. Ah, oh, dang it. Well, the Forearm Monkey dude, um, which if you've seen it will make sense. If you don't, I apologize for not being able to give you a better description off the top of my head. I've only seen it once so far. Um, they made me love him. More than I had a connection between um, Voss and Beckett. I was like, or Va, Va or Vi, or Van, or whatever. Van, her, name her name and Beckett. And then she dies, and I was like, oh, all right, sick. Like, I didn't feel anything when she died. And then Monkey Dude gets shot, and I'm like, shit, he was going to retire. Like, it was one of those things, like, uh, he he did a couple nods in the writing, which I thought were pretty good. This is where they started to kind of pick up the 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 te- or not the teasers, but the little Easter eggs, because he talks about opening a cantina on a place not so hot, which was a uh, direct relation to the canteen, our cantina, the one we all know and love. From the um, and so, um, it it ended up being 
super cool. Um, and it ends up finding out, which actually oh. they don't make this so, clear in the movie at all. Apparently, which I'm reading right now, a- apparently Val is Beckett is is Tobias's wife. They were married. Oh. That's yeah. what it says. I remember says hearing that. about that, but that's never mentioned in the movie either. Yeah. Just like, I thought they were just dating. Yeah, I thought it, she was just but like apparently a fling. Val is. And Val, by the way, Fanny Newman, also from Westworld and stuff, she's a fantastic actress too. Yeah, she was and in a she's curve. Barely in this movie, she's introduced, and then the next scene, she dies in the train. She scene. has like five minutes of screen time. Oh, yeah. So the forearm monkey guy, that's his name is Rio oh, Durant. Yeah. He's, he's kind of a cool character, but he also dies during the scene. He's yeah. voiced by John Favreau, of the, course, the director of Iron Man. Yep. And, um,. That's really cool. And he's also directing that new Star Wars show. Yeah, super excited for that. It was good that they brought him in. And this is where it kind of, like you said, starts to pick up. And we get those nods to, like, the cantina and all that stuff. And it starts to get a little bit... um, We kind of understand at this point that, you know, what they're searching for, the... um, What's the... Corellium? Coaxum? Coaxum. Is that it? Yeah, Coaxum. Coaxum. They're searching for the Coaxum, and that, you know, it's really important, and this is how all the starships are fueled. Cool. I'm glad they brought that in, finally, um, in in a more uh, canon-based, like, they gave it uh, more explanation than uh, it had ever been given before. So they fail the train scene. Then they have to go back to one of my favorite characters, Voss. Who was a last minute casting change? Who was a last minute casting change? Because he was filmed with a completely different actor. I forget who it was, but and then uh, they had to refilm it, and because um, because he didn't want to do the Paul Bettany was uh, in the soundstage right next door filming Infinity War as Vision, and they needed like a really like tall and empowered, like like like, very powerful looking actor. And next to everyone else, he does he's towering over everyone, you know. Uh So it was a good choice. And they got him because they're like, hey, come over here when you're done. Over yeah. There. We'll pay you a couple million. Come over and shoot a scene or two. He's like, oh, all right. Yeah. You know, and that was incredible. I love if you didn't. This is the like props to the design team and to the costuming team and the makeup team and, and, and all of the practical effects team. Uh, also the special effects team. This movie had a lot of really little stuff that was awesome. They didn't just try to wow you with the colors. If you've noticed, Voss's, the, the like gills on his face changed and got redder the oh, matter his he got. And his yeah. eyes and everything too. Oh, that was such a little thing that you didn't really notice till later and it was oh and, and Paul Bettany is probably the best actor in this movie too. Just yeah. Like <laughs> well he's the, he's by far the most experienced um and he probably didn't have to reshoot ten thousand shots yeah. because he was 100 percent of the reshoots and it was his first time on set I, and i'm also pretty sure they they changed the script in such a way that every one of his scenes was in his office right like maybe he had that one little bit in the party scene but then the two other scenes yeah, he had written his, everything office, in the office. i think he got it done in a day or something yeah he know? probably came over and they were like we're gonna film all <laughs> this and then he's the, like all right jumping ahead for just a second even the fight at the end of the movie is in his, his office. office everything's yep. in his office yeah so that's he a good point take care of it see yeah. that was smart on that was smart on uh, ron howard's part that that's that's a good way to do reshoots is just work with what you have so they go on to the the yacht they fail there's this back and forth on like you know we're gonna send um kira with you guys to make sure everything's fine and we don't really get much like i get why they were hinting at kira's past because at the end with the super big spoiler um which i did enjoy that but part of that problem was I don't know if she was trying to downplay it to be like, oh, I'm super hard and edgy now, but I felt no emotional connection at this point between Han and Kira. None. I, I felt every time they looked at each other, it pulled me out of the movie. I was like, oh, okay, it's it's Han and Kira again. And then, oh, like, oh, Boss is here and Paul Bettany. Ah, oh, it's amazing. And then, ah, oh, Kira and Han are again. And then it just was like this roller coaster for me where I would get dragged out and then brought back in with by the, all this amazing stuff. Also with, um, which gets introduced shortly, Lando um, and Donald Glover's character, that first line he, yeah, he does so beautiful. Oh, absolutely. Lando shows up halfway through the movie and immediately yeah. you wish the movie was about him. Yeah, I wish it was a Lando <laughs> film. It would have been incredible if it was. Because, man, yeah, Donald Glover, um, Danny Glover, no, Danny Glover's from Lethal Weapon. Yeah. Donald Glover, it is Donald. Um, he does such a good job of being Lando. It's incredible. Oh. There's all those little character moments like Lando's log or whatever that was. Well, the, well, the, was. Yeah, the opening, um, the opening scene where he goes, and how was I supposed to know she was an Imperial spy? Yeah. And then I was like, that's Lando right there. Now, 
uh, they said he nailed it, and I would argue he did very well. There was a couple parts where, like, when you're yelling, it's kind of hard to keep the accent. Yeah. So it wasn't it wasn't one hundred percent there, but I would argue he was the next to Voss, and that's a very experienced actor. Um, Lan- uh, Donald Glover as Lando nailed it. That yeah. was that was what kept the movie up for me. Uh, yeah. So, so yeah, they do the little Sabat game, and you think, okay, that's the Sabat game where he wins the Falcon, but then Lando has the ace up his sleeve ch- yep. and like cheats, and Lose. so you know, like they don't win. It's so like, Wait, but I thought he won it, so they do- he doesn't, yep. and Lando ends up coming along with them for twenty five percent or whatever it was. And this is where we get to introduced to my favorite new character. I do not care what you guys say about it. I thought it was it presented a hilarious nod to a topic that's been going on was l3 introduction on just just over the top droid liberation (laughs) this this intense need to free everyone i thought she was such a great character i thought the person who played her whoever mocapped her she looked like an android it looked it looked so real they did such a great job with her that i was like oh this is beautiful now everybody can shove off on like you know they're trying to shove stuff down our throats it, it doesn't matter that, that's not the point the point is how the acting was and what that character did for us and that set up the troubles they were going to have later there needed to be a way for them to like basically get through the castle run i thought that was a great introduction i thought it was hilarious so she was she was a sassier more active c3po um she was gonna have it her way because she could and I thought that was a great introduction. Um, and I think at that point, they head off to Kessel. Kessel. So, yeah, and Kessel has the unrefined uh, coaxium. Yes. Which, for some reason, they thought was a good idea to steal in lieu of the actual stuff, thinking he wouldn't know the difference for some reason. I don't know. Wait. Because, remember, that's the whole thing at the end. He's like, oh, you thought I wouldn't know the difference or whatever, you know. Because no. they're like, oh, we could get unrefined coaxium from Kessel. No, no, know? no. They agreed to that. You missed that. Oh, I did. Miss yeah. That so movie. in Voss, in the ship, I guess I they were that. they were about to kill them. They were about to, he, Voss was about to kill them. Well, and then they, what was the and thing then, at the end? Then I uh, uh, I'll, we'll I'll, catch, I'll catch you up to that. <laughs> so they agreed to it, and they agreed to meet on, which is why he, Voss ended up showing up not on Kessel but on, um, whatever. Yeah. The the last part of the but, last ship. Well, we'll get there in a second. Yeah. So the 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 uh, the planet where they meet up with. Uh, in order to have it refined. They're meeting there to pass it over to Voss. That was the deal. So, so. once once it gets on Kessel, though, I feel like the movie slowed down again. Yeah. Because there's so like a lot of stuff that happens. Like, they, they end up, you know, fighting, and, like, you know, Chewie goes off to save some other Wookiees, and, and they have this moment cool. where he's like, I'll see you later, old friend. Maybe we'll meet up again someday. I think, oh, cool. Well, that's where they separate, and then maybe in another movie that we'll see them get back awesome. together. No. But no, like, two minutes later, Chewie's just back there. with him, and that was... There was no point to that that exchange, yeah, which was kind of empty. Then at that point, and then L three immediately gets her, another, you know, another you like the character, yep. but then she Jane. immediately just dies. Yep. They have the thing where they put her brain in the Falcon, so it's like, neat. oh, she survives the Falcon kind of because that explains the whole C three PO line in Empire, where he's like, your computer is not behaving or whatever, yeah. you know, which is interesting. I thought I thought um, those were more little nods and Easter eggs that they gave us, which I thought was probably the best part of the movie. When they're escaping Kessel and they do the Kessel Run, I don't know what you guys thought the Kessel Run was going to be, but I definitely and Mr. Sunny movies is so salty and funny when he does. It's <laughs> yeah. like, oh, this is definitely what I expected. He's you know being sarcastic, but it's just like the little thing where he goes. Out of the, the the loop and through the thing and through the squid and everything. I'm not gonna. It it would be stupid to go into details about it because it was oh, it's ridiculous. Oh, I but. will. I oh, will. okay. <laughs> because I got so pissed at this. It was like, all right, we're presented with the problem: blockade and Tie Fighters for kind of an unknown reason, other than it's a like it'd be like the U.S. sending a bunch of soldiers to Iraq. Oh. We've never seen that before. Um, but. <laughs> for a resource that so that that I, that part i got then they veer off it kind of forces them to go through this thing and then they put her brain in there in order to steer them but this is the part that drove me nuts this is where they took that easter egg thing and they busted out their list it was a checklist of like how do we make the millennium falcon look like it does today oh yeah that's right i forgot it goes in this order it was um landing gear the i think it was landing gear uh satellite gun escape pod and it happened all in five minutes 
Yeah. And I was like, I forgot about all that. I was just uh, going to bitch about the Parsec thing, but yeah, you're right. It's like the, it goes from this beautiful blue and white ship to the piece of gray crap that it is later in just that one scene. But it felt it felt really check marks. They were like, and that, this oh, needs by to the go, way, and this needs uh, to go, and this. You reminded needs to me go. about stuff. It's like yeah. that's the whole movie, by the way. It's like the Han Solo checklist, meeting Chewie, yeah. doing this, getting the Falcon, meeting Lando. It's like all it, it does. The movie does kind of feel like a checklist. Mm-hmm. A little bit. It's like the prequels didn't even feel like a checklist. There was like things we didn't expect. Also in, <laughs> in this, I gotta bring something up. Uh, a huge problem I had was this is when it started to become really linear in the storyline too. It was problem, solution, problem, solution, problem, solution. Mm-hmm. And they were getting them immediately. They're like, we're trapped at the black hole. Solution. We're like, they just immediately had the answer. They yeah. didn't ever feel like there was going to be any peril because every time they were presented with some type of challenge, they were back. They were back and it was yeah. a problem. But they do so. sink the squid thing and then get out and, you know, they complete the Kessel run in uh, about 12 parsecs. He's like, he's, if you he's, like, down. he's like, it's 12 if you round down. But let me bitch about parsecs for a second because when George Lucas mm-hmm. wrote Star Wars, Star Wars, um, <laughs> uh, he wrote it like, oh, it's the ship that made the Kessel run in 12 parsecs. That was supposed to be a measurement of speed. And then everybody was like, oh, George, it's a measure of distance. And he's like, yeah, I know it's a measure of distance, but I figured the general movie audience wouldn't know that. And I just wanted something that would sound spacey. Yeah. And I think that's right. And that's all it was. But it was supposed to be a measure of speed. And everybody was like, you know, that's way of the joke. It's distance, not speed. But it was in the context of Star Wars, the original script. Speed. It was supposed to be speed. And so. This changes everything. This is like the, oh, we got to do this now so that everything makes technological sense so it's like so they did it as a measure of distance yeah, where i guess the kessel run is just that that whole like worm worm tube the uh which is the 20 wormhole, parsecs which is 20 parsecs and to, in order to make the kessel run in less than 20 parsecs he gets out goes through the hole and comes back or whatever he took a shortcut I thought lame it, yeah so he does it in 12 and now it's like okay we fixed it the parsecs is distance again no fuck you yeah wrong <laughs> wrong they should have just kept it as speed and just said you know f to you know the whatever you yeah know? there should have been some crazy thing they figured that. out with yeah that was they should have been something where they <laughs> what they did with the coaxium that like made the ship travel even Damn it. Faster. See, I knew just talking about the movie was going to make me saltier. I, know, I came sorry. out of that movie he thinking, said like, nine you know out what? Of 10. He texted me that that was a 9 out yeah, of 10. Yeah, as soon as I saw finished the movie, and I'll, we'll get to why I was so yeah, hyped at the yeah, end. Yeah, agree. But as soon as the movie was over, I was like, yeah, that was actually pretty good. Better than what Chris said, 9 out of 10. And then I uh, I texted you yesterday. I'm like, eh, 8 out of 10. Yeah. And now we're and talking like, about it. I'm like, uh, well, I don't know. I don't think about it. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So we get that. They get out. Great. They land on whatever the planet is. It, it was so... It was so quick. Person oh, yeah, like, then they ended up on the desert planet, which was not Jakku, so, uh, not Tatooine. Severian. Severian. How many S- desert S- planets, Savarian. dude? Apparently Severian. all of them. Apparently all of them I was really hoping that was going to be Jakku to like have a little bit of connection or to... like a know, snow stone. planet. We've seen one. So anyways, so they get to Severian in order to refine, and, and this, is the, this is the part where you'll, all of this other stuff will start to make sense, where Severian... Uh, uh, to refine the coaxium to meet Voss to pass it over. And then that's when they have this thing um, where they run into the... Um, we track the team from Andor um, with, I think it's Effies? Ennephies? Ennephies? I think it's Ennephies. So it's the pirate yes, from earlier yes. that was fighting them on the train. We it's yes. revealed to be a small which girl was, which was, who's in charge of them. Which was sick. And if I you look that hard enough, cool. you'll see two tubes from Rogue One. He was uh, you know, um, what's his name? Uh, I always forget his name in the movie, but it's um Ennephis? Uh, uh no 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 no. Eh, who's the who's the the guy in I Rogue more, One? I need more descriptions. Who? Rogue One, the Who? you know, um The big dude, the red one? Big, 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 you know, big guy. Yeah. Takes who, care of Jin. Um, with the with the big gun, right? No, <laughs> I don't know. Continue. Lacy eye, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. Um. Oh yeah. Thanks. <laughs> um, Forrest Whitaker. Forrest Whitaker. Yeah. Yeah. So two tubes was like his right hand man in yes. that movie. <laughs> Anyways, you could see him as one of the the guys that works for for that, which I thought was cool. Another second. another cool nod. Anyway, so they so what happens where? Oh, okay, <laughs> that's right. So they give the real stuff to them. No. No. The real stuff went to Voss. 
He wait, he did get the real stuff. Uh huh. And then they had to kill oh. him to get it back, and then they loaded it back. Sorry, up, you're right. We were out. supposed to think that the correct the other way that they Jesus. came up and they created a <laughs> fake one, which is how. See, I'm lost too. Yeah, it got it got real foggy. But I was not really like delved in with the character, so all I yeah. was doing was well, chopping up. The anyways, plot. they they have kind of a cool sword ish fight, and then Voss dies. Uh, and oh, and Beckett at one point betrays them and doesn't betray them and then betrays them again. That was I'm just, I'm just gonna too. skip all Whatever. that. Whatever. He no Han point. shoots Beckett first. Yeah. And Han's then, um, first. <laughs> and then, uh, and then Kira and Han are all alone and she makes up some BS excuse on why she needs to stay behind or something. She's gotta clean it up. They killed everybody. Yeah, I know. It's what just does she leave? To... Just run away. But uh, it's then revealed after Han goes, she turns on Modern. Here is the coolest part yes, of the movie. This she is the turns only part on that at the hologram and it's Darth yes. Maul, which confuses. <gasps> Everybody in the audience who hasn't Except seen Clone Wars and us. Rebels, because they don't realize that this is the this is a part in the story where Darth Maul is actually still alive. Oh, because yeah. if you watch Clone Wars, you know he survived Episode One. Yep. He has his robot legs, and it's before Rebels where he meets his end. You know, mm-hmm. so uh, now and and also if you paid attention to the Clone Wars, you know that Maul is in charge of a giant crime syndicate, which apparently Voss was a part of that same crime syndicate. Correct. So his superior, uh, or he's Voss's, running, or he's running it. We don't know that. Yet. Well, so apparently Voss was working for Maul, and now Kira seemingly wants to take his position in the, within the syndicate. So it's like, yeah. it's like, oh, she's not the goody two shoes girl that we all thought she I was. I like that. I thought that was great. And then they move past that, and then we see Han do a rematch uh, with Lando. He steals his secret card, that and then he of, wins the Falcon. That came out of nowhere. That was. I did enjoy the line, like, Han, I'm so glad you survived. That was hilarious. <laughs> and the back and forth and stuff like that, I thought was cute. But it fell out of place because he had this really intense moment. Yet Han, you know, kind of reconciling and giving the Quaxium mm. up to the people in order for the rebellion to survive because he truly is a good guy. Cute, right. cute, cute. And then it was just like, boom, a gambling but scene. There's no reaction. Like, during that Lando and after the movie ends, there's no reaction of like, huh, I wish I knew where Kira went or any of that. There's no, like... There's no... Yeah, they were just like... He just stares at her leave and that's it. It's like they wrote it and then they were like, Man. Oh, fuck, how does he get the Falcon? <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, the uh, so anyways... So uh, anyways, the mall part was cool just because yeah. it was, uh, you know... It, it just Darth Maul is really cool and he's back in the movie. So here's what I think before I give our, our final scores yes, here. Yes. Before I give our final scores, here's what I think. I know that Eldon Ehrenreich is uh, is signed on for two more movies. Correct. I don't think, in fact, they even said things where they're kind of tr- trying to figure out which direction mm-hmm. to go in. I don't think they're doing sequels to Solo. Agreed. Based on how the movie was made and everything. Agreed. I don't think they ever really were. My theory is that they're still planning on doing a Boba Fett movie and an Obi-Wan movie mm-hmm. and then that, that Kira and Darth Maul side plot will be a part of both oh, of those movies yep. especially if you know mm-hmm. again Maul's relationship with Obi-Wan and how that's supposed to end in Rebels and I think we'll see that on film yes. in the Obi-Wan movie so I think there there will be kind of a loose trilogy where it's a completely different plot every time but the Kira and Darth Maul thing is going to be kind of a shadow subplot in the background of those things mm-hmm. so we might see uh, Han Solo played by Alden Ehrenreich in a couple scenes of yeah. the Boba Fett movie and in the Obi-Wan movie but he won't be the main character yep. it'll be Boba Fett the Boba Fett slash Jabba the Hutt movie and then Obi-Wan movie that's where the Boba Fett slash Jabba the Hutt at the Jabba the Hutt moment is when we will see Han Han will be a I mean they heavily it. hinted at the end of this movie yeah. he's like there's a big job on Tatooine a big boss over there who can only be Jabba the Hutt and then you know he'll get you know him all roped up and everything you know, and it, oh, we'll it'll see. be cool. I think that I think the next two movies will be great. So rich, yes. Final score, buddy. All right. Final score, so, why? And again, then give me a I go up and down. And... Man, there was a couple of moments where we we're bitching. I'm like, man, am I going to give this like a six point five? I'm going to meet myself in the middle here. I'm going to give it a seven point five, mm-hmm. which I think it's pretty good. It's an average score. Mm-hmm. I think that the movie had some really great moments. It had some really great action. And it had some laugh out loud stuff, but unfortunately, that first twenty five minutes of the movie, some glaring plot holes no and kidding. some terrible chemistry between actors, really brings that down to a seven point five. So, final mm. score from me, seven point five. I went the entire movie right in at a five. I thought I would never watch this movie again if I had to, like, if I was ever going to sit down and watch all of the Star Wars films and chronology and all of it, the episodes. From beginning to end in chronological order, I would skip this movie. I was so out of it. I thought, all right, they're doing the job. They're checking the boxes. And you get a five because you put your name on the paper. And uh, until the end, until the end, then it made sense on why Kira's character was so cold. 
And the reason we just didn't feel any connection from Han is because it was Alden. I apologize, man. You got put in a hell of a spot. Mm. But the reason Kira was so cold is because she knew where she was going to go the whole time. And I love Maul's introduction at the oh, end. I yeah. thought that was perfect. So, and so for me, I, that bumped me up to a 7 out of 10. I thought it was a passing movie. I loved all the side characters, but they decided to pull a Rogue One on us and kill everybody. But like without rhyme or reason... Why did the dude have to die? Couldn't he have just gotten hurt and then come back later and help them with something else? Like, maybe he was the one pushing the cart of uh, stuff instead of Chewbacca, and then they could have let him run away. It was a, there was a lot of stuff I just didn't track. Right. It felt very disjointed and really called to them having two directors. It, it's just it just what wasn't happened. having it. Yeah. Well, final so. scores 7.5, 7.0. Yep. So that's it. Uh, that is our spoiler review for Solo. Yes. Uh, thank you for watching a Star Wars 40 minutes. Woohoo! And then uh, next week, as this week rolls out and they start announcing like what's going to happen in the future, we will talk to you next week about what Lucasfilm and Disney are going to do about the future of Star Wars. Yes. We're not done yet, though, because we still have a question for you this week. And I want you guys to give us your score if you have seen the movie in uh, the comments. Did you guys ask below. them a question last week? Uh, uh, we did, but I'm not going to get to that this week because this was our <laughs> solo review. So, oh, no, you were with me. We just no, did, no, no. We just did the short one. Didn't you? Oh, no. You yeah, did I did video. Okay. Yeah, okay. so anyways, okay. I'm going to ask you a question this week. But the first thing I want you to do is I want you to type at least four words. And then in those words, put your score. I want your score out of 10. Um, that being said, your question for this week is what do you think the next two films out of this prequel trilogy is going to be? Do you agree with us? Do you think it's going to be a Boba Fett and then an Obi-Wan? Or do you think it's going to be something entirely different? Do you think they'll follow um, Darth Maul given how much hype he's going to have gotten from this? Do you think they're going to do a baddie? Um, are they going to do a bad guy movie? Let us know in the comments below. We will read those next week. And always remember to give us a thumbs up and share. All right, I guess we're going to answer both questions next week. Then. Yep. <laughs> That's fine. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye-bye.